Welcome to Julie Lawton Living, featuring engaging conversations on creating the life, business, and luxury home of your dreams. With over 30 years of experience in the design-build industry, Julie has completed over 1,000 remodels and custom homes in Southern California and provides architecture, design, engineering, and general contracting as a unique one-stop shop for her clients. Let's join the conversation now. Julie, it's great to be with you again today. Thanks, David. Hey, today we're talking about leveraging your superpowers to experience true success. So fun question to get us started. When it comes to superpowers, what cartoon character do you most identify with and why? Well, I have her right on my desk and I look at her every day because my sister gave me these little sticky notes with her on them and they've been on my desk for years and here it is. Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman. (laughs) I love it. So what is it about Wonder Woman that you identify with and admire? Well, she's strong and she's bulletproof and she comes to the rescue. (laughs) So good. You know, when I was a kid, I loved watching um, the Super Friends, which was, you know, cartoon show, which had Mm -hmm. Superman, Wonder Woman, Aquaman, the Wonder Twins. And Wonder Woman always was in her invisible jet flying around from place to place. <laughs> and uh, I think about you, like your King Ranch uh, truck is your yeah, invisible I have jet. A, I fly around in my jet all day long. It's called a King Ranch. And yeah, speeding tickets not happening anymore. <laughs> well, that's good. Did, 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 you, did you have some speeding tickets here I, recently? You know, I didn't um, have any since for 30 years. And I got one uh, the other day on this stretch of road where every everybody was going the same speed i don't know why they picked me (laughs) oh man all right well maybe you can get out of it so let's talk about for a minute (laughs) what are your superpowers and how did you identify those over the course of your life well i seriously think one of my superpowers is listening and i didn't think about that when i was younger and probably didn't do a whole lot of that until after i was 40 trust me and um and then my other superpower is my empathy and compassion and um really taking wanting to help someone almost more than help myself would you know that's would be bad but i i really go out on my way to help people and i have no problem dropping what i'm doing and getting stuff done for someone else before i do what i need to do well, I'm talking about clients and work, of course, but um, my I think listening seriously is number one. And then my, you know, ability to empathize because I kind of feel I'm an artist and I feel and sense people's emotions. I'm super sensitive to what someone's thinking or feeling. And that helps me take action and do the right thing. So it makes it better for them instead of worse. Mm. OK, so this is very fascinating because you are. Uh, from a um, outward experience, you're, you know, you're kick butt, like you get things done, you take charge, you make things happen. And yet you have this ability to listen and empathize. Those two things, the the kick butt, intense type A, listen, empathize, don't always go together. How have mm-hmm. you, do you feel like you've had those skills of listening and empathizing and the type A get things done? your whole life? Or have you developed those as some skills? Like how how those things come to pass? I'm pretty sure I've had the type A personality, but I was so shy as a kid and an artist, I never really let it show. And but I was always organized and my room was neat. And I always had to everything have everything a certain way. And I like to follow rules. So I knew I had it, but it really didn't shine until I was able to be the one, not just the t- part of the team, but the one in charge of the client's job. Because in the old days, I was part of a team. I was a part of the architecture firm. I was a part of the design firm. I was working with contractors. So I was never the lead. I was just part of a team. So you kind of got to step back and work with people. So it was always there because my mom says my personality has been that you just didn't know it. <laughs> and I, I, or I didn't let it shine. So, um, but now I can recognize it because I like to kind of analyze myself and step out and look back at what am I doing? And I noticed that, gosh, I think my biggest skill is listening. So uh, it's funny. And how do you, how does listening play out in your life? Do you find that to be more in your, like your marriage, your friendships, family, clients? Like how, how do you utilize listening? 
Well, I can tell you in the last 10 years, I'm a little more slowed down because I turned 50, then I turned 60. So you kind of slow down. So I noticed that I use listening more as I got older and um, that helped. But the pushy me, the pushy me has always been there. So every single day I have the gas on full speed to get things done and then kick button. But then I got to shift gears when I talk to the client and then listen and be compassionate. So all day long, it's a back and forth because I got to be careful and not respond to a client when I'm in Julie kick butt mode. <laughs> that, that's not good. And um, so I'm constantly switching back and forth. But but um, I know I can tell you that as I got older, that I did listen more because I don't want to get into my personal life. But I was single a long time and I didn't have to listen to anybody. So <laughs> And I, you know, you have to learn that whole respect and, um, you know, it's funny, but I, I can tell you that, um, it's gotten better, um, as you, as I aged. Mm -hmm. So my guess is that when you say, I can't respond to a client when I'm in kick butt Julie mode, that you learned that by responding in kick butt Julie mode and it didn't work out well, I assume. Well, you don't want to have the client um feel the stress of when you're in full force with trying to get something done with the subs right. and the men because you can't talk to the client like you talk to the men because when I give when I'm in contractor mode I'm in full force not shouting orders but giving orders but really what I'm doing is responding to them it we go back and forth really fast and there's no please and thank you it's just this this that that okay yes yes what do you want I want this I want that I need this I need that so we so we go back. There's no finesse on the um, please and thank you and how are you today. It's mm -hmm. I need this now. Okay, great. What do you need? I need this. So it's a it's a constant dialogue in a different way. Yes. In kick butt mode because they expect me to respond immediately and I do. So we have this thing. The teamwork is different, but with the client, you know, they they're like, oh wow, because <laughs> I come in. I come in hot. <laughs> it's like that's not good. So uh, they and then they they know I'm hyper and I have a high, you know, a lot of uh, energy. But I do try to slow it down for them. But um, I try not to email and text too much either. I'd rather just pick up the phone and talk to them because, mm -hmm. gosh, it's dangerous when you text and email a client because, oh yeah, so much can be misunderstood. Yeah, since one wrong word or just not or being too quick, they think you're being possibly rude if you don't complete the sentence and you, you get too short of an answer. Cause you know, I'm trying not to text when I drive, I always pull over, but you know, you, you, it's, it's hard because um, there's a lot of communication going on all day long. Right. Right. Especially with multiple clients, multiple jobs, multiple oh, yeah. phases. Yeah. It's a a lot of things. Yeah. So how would you encourage people to identify and recognize their own unique superpowers? Well, it's what you get complimented on. I mean, you could actually just go around and ask your friends and family, what do you, what, what do you like about me best? Because uh, sometimes, like, I did, I seriously did not know I was an A-type personality. I just thought I was like my grandma, kind of driven <laughs> and just wanted stuff now <laughs> or do it or else. Just kidding. But, you know, it was, uh, there's an A-type personality, but you can ask your friends to describe you. And then take that Myers-Briggs test because it's fascinating what comes out and then it describes the personality traits. But some people already know, but it's funny. A lot of people don't have a clue what their personality type is. And um, and they wonder why they can't, you know, get along with certain types. I mean, I've even tried astrological charts to figure people out. I mean, going as far as ask their birthday because I need to unlock what, what works for my clients. And um what is their personality type? And you only get that by um, interviewing them. And But it's so helpful if you know yours so you can deal with other people better. So that's yes. the thing. One of the resources that I've used over the years um, as I've worked with people is something called Clifton Strengths. Um, it used to be oh. called Strength Finders. It was developed oh, by yeah. the Gallup organization. And they take, I don't remember how many, it's like 36 strengths or something. And they, you take a test and it ends up giving you your top five strengths. And the, there you go. the principle is that in the United States specifically, if you ask the average person, where should you put your focus on your weaknesses and turning those into strengths or taking your strengths and multiplying those and making those even stronger. And the yes. average person in the United States would say, we need to work on our weaknesses. That's mm -hmm. part of our culture. Ah. And, and yet statistically, the 
difference between um, somehow working on your strengths versus magnifying, I'm sorry, working on your weaknesses versus magnifying your strengths, we get so much more by magnifying our strengths, by focusing yeah. on our strengths. That's where our major growth is, that our weaknesses really will never be turned to strengths. You know, I would have to agree because I remember when I was young, I had people telling me what I wasn't good at, you know, and your family criticizes what this and that, what you do. And I'm like, but if you would just focus it on what I was good at, I yes. wouldn't have wasted so much time trying to fix what I'm not good at. Because when you look back, you know, maybe I'm not good at this or that, but I, I can see it through friends and people, what they go through, because I can hear it in people talking when they say, I got to work on this, I got to, but why? Just work on what you're good at, because there's some things you can't change about yourself. You can soften, but there's things you can't change. So I have to agree with that. I think I, I love the way you said that you soften them. I oftentimes say minimize them, trying to minimize your weaknesses so that they don't hurt you. Right. Um, but it's, it's really about magnifying your strengths. So let's just say someone does really determine what their superpowers are. How can they leverage those superpowers on a daily basis in order to experience success? Well, then you, if you're actually allowing yourself to be you, then you can have a better relationship with your boss or your, your clients or your friends, because you're really only expressing that part of you. That's really the true you and don't cover it up or try to be someone else or just because your friends think you should be this way or that way, or I don't know, people get caught in what other people think of them. So you got to stop caring about what other people think about you. Number one, that's one of the biggest things that people go through and all the pressures from social media and what you should look like and what your makeup should look like and what clothes you should wear for guys. I'm like, geez, try to get off that train and just be yourself. And then you'll find out, wow, people like you even more because you're you. <laughs> mm. One of the things that I've been thinking about recently is the idea of feeling comfortable in my own skin. And you seem to be really comfortable in your skin, Julie. Is is that true or am I making that up? No, I actually like myself and I've always liked myself, but I've had a hard time, you know, with other people possibly criticizing me or making fun of me. Or, and I've gotten a lot of crap because of who I am, because I have a strong sense of me. And I've always liked me and I always think it's funny how I'm just me. I'm kind of this geeky girl that does art stuff, but I'm really a kind of a geek. So I, I get me, but I, I took the time to understand me and like me. And that's so key because if you're, you're, if you're talking to yourself and saying you need to fix this, I don't like this about me and I don't like this because your little inner voice is talking too. If you're busy talking about what's not right about you, that's not good. You need to um, switch that little thing and just really appreciate everything about yourself that is you. And and that's what goes back to knowing yourself first, because so many people are wearing a mask and they're having issues from the past, maybe. And it's just silly. So, uh, yeah, I like myself and I, I find myself funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't. And I get it. And, and I and then the more I learned about my personality, then I realized why people act the way they do around me, because <laughs> I am kind of bossy. But um, it's fun. <laughs> mm. So I think about a differentiation between superpowers and maybe skills that one has developed over the course of one's life. So I don't know, do you differentiate between those two? And does it even matter to differentiate between those, like things that are maybe innately built inside of you versus skills that you develop over time? Well, I was born an artist. I can draw and paint anything, right? But I defined my skills in college, well, actually high school drafting. So I could, was a master draftsman. Mechanical engineering was easy um, by the time I was first year in college. But then I learned all this other stuff in college. So it was fun to take my natural talent and then put put a professional skill behind it because I could have just stayed an oil painter. I didn't have to become an architect, you know, architectural student and really learn how to draw buildings. But I was doing that naturally. So the point is, it's I think it's important to take your natural skill and perfect it. Just like if you're a dancer and a professional dancer, you know, there's you know, it's just not dancing, but professional aspect is huge. So whatever you're good at, take it to that next level, because I think it's important to be professionally trained um, on all things. 
that you mm-hmm. can that you're good at so mm-hmm. are there any risks or pitfalls to leaning heavily into your superpowers and really just focusing on those any risks or pitfalls you see I don't think there's any risk because can only help balance you out because maybe you weren't enjoying them or recognizing them before. Because if you're at full max on your superpowers, you should be doing full max on what you love doing and it should be benefiting everyone around you because you're happy, they're happy, you know, you're doing, you're you're at your best. So I don't mm-hmm. think so. Uh-uh. Okay. So once I find out what my superpowers are and I'm kind of like understanding myself more, how would you suggest that I communicate those to the people in my life specifically the people that i live with my boss my clients people i collaborate with should i share those with people should i not what what are your thoughts sir i think you should tell people what you are about and what your strengths and weaknesses are and which means what you will and won't tolerate which boils down to boundaries because maybe you have people coming at you that are asking you to do things you're not good at or not comfortable with. And maybe they're invading your space. There's this whole thing about who am I? Who are you? How are we going to communicate? Even if it's family, you, you got to have boundaries and rules about how to communicate and what works for you and wasn't doesn't work for you. Because some people have, you know, they're a little more sensitive and they may have a mild something going on. Like I'm super sensitive. So I hear and see, feel everything. So it's tough because I, oh, I feel, I know what people are thinking as they're walking towards me. So, um, <clears throat> you know, you got to set boundaries of how you're treated, how you're, how you're spoken to. Maybe you're a visual learner. Maybe you want everything in writing because maybe somebody's ordering you think things around, but you can't comprehend it because there's things as ADHD and AD, all those things like that. It's better to have things in writing f- for you because sometimes people don't process the same. So it's, it's huge how to learn to explain what works for you because you don't, can't just assume someone's going to um, be the same as you or um, know what you're thinking or what works for you. Mm-hmm. As you think about um, the team that we have at Julie uh, Lawton uh, Design Build and Julie Lawton General Contracting, and you think about all those players on the team, how do you as a owner, boss, manager, understand their superpowers and really draw upon those like how do you how do you do that as a manager well i meet with each one and talk to them and even if they're not directly under me i make sure i talk to them when they're hired and get a sense of who they are and then as they do their work i find out what they're good at and how they socialize with others so they can be moved into management or they can be moved into another position that really benefits their, you know, benefits us because we're maximizing their skill. Some people aren't good at certain things and we don't want to push, put them in a place they're not good at. Some guys aren't good at talking to the client and do not want to talk to the client. So they don't do that because why would I force them? That'd be crazy. And some, some of the workers are not good at leading. They want to be part of the team. That's it. And they they pick one guy and they end up picking that guy together because there's one leader in the bunch usually. Like we got carpenters, we got framers, we got painters, we got drywall, and there's always one leader and they all agree on that guy together. But I go out of my way to for the people that are right next to me in the office and there's people, like five people right around me that work with me and I identify their strengths and then I work with them based on their strengths and I don't push it where they're not good. And I make sure that they can excel in their strengths only because I'm there to build their careers and help them advance through the company and make more money and do more things. But we have to really find, find out what they're good at first. And that happens the first three to six months. Mm -hmm. And then we, then we just point them in the direction and then we set goals for them. So um, how, and I love that you're, you're talking about this, that it's about growth. It's about the individual taking ground, Mm -hmm. obviously in order for the company to grow, but how can I, over the course of months, years, kind of evolve or expand my superpowers over time. Like I understand them, I got them, but then how do I then continue to grow into them? What would you suggest? Well, you shape your duties and what you're doing and like your services, what you offer. So you offer more. And then as you're 
if you know you have a superpower to be better in sales, take more courses, take more classes, you know, improve your abilities professionally in the areas that you're automatically shining in. You know, I mean, I read so many self-help books and so many books on, you know, everything you can imagine that interests me and really opened my eyes to, gosh, that makes sense. Oh, gosh. And some of the stuff I'm naturally good at, like in sales, but then learning sales and learning, oh, it's just fascinated me. So mm -hmm. it's fun. I love it. All right. Leveraging your superpowers to experience true success. Julie, Wonder Woman. That's your name. Yay. <laughs> Julie, I have a couple, the Wonder couple, Woman. I have a couple other names, but it involves swear words. Well, badass. But... <laughs> well, it's good to be with you. Hey, and as uh, you're listening today, encourage you to check out our other episodes at julielottenliving.com. Of course, you can listen on all the different platforms, Apple, Spotify, Pod, uh, Google Podcast, Amazon Podcast, Stitcher, and so forth. And be sure to follow Julie Lawton on all of the social media platforms. We post behind the scenes videos on a weekly basis about things that are happening in current projects and previous projects. And it's just a great way to see all of what Julie has to offer. So great to be with you, Julie. Thank you very much. And thank you for listening, everyone. <laughs>